Samsung has just launched its most powerful and robust smartwatch yet, the Galaxy Watch Ultra, which is particularly interesting for us athletes. Along with many new features and a sturdier build, the battery life has also reportedly improved. But how well does the watch actually perform? I've been testing the Galaxy Watch Ultra for the last couple of weeks and taken it on numerous training sessions. In today's video we'll look at whether the watch is a good choice for athletes. But before we dive into the actual review I want to emphasize one thing. Just because of the name Ultra it might seem like Samsung has just copied Apple's Apple Watch Ultra. However to be fair Samsung had already used this name with the Galaxy S20 Ultra smartphone in March 2020 more than two years before the first Apple Watch Ultra. And given that Samsung now has many Ultra models, it just makes sense that the Galaxy Watch now also comes in an Ultra Edition. Additionally, it's true that some new features on this watch might remind you of the Apple Watch Ultra, but honestly, Samsung takes inspiration from Apple just as Apple takes inspiration from Samsung all the time, just as all the manufacturers do this all the time as well. So yeah, in my opinion, this is completely normal and shouldn't really matter to us users as long as all of these features are nice and useful. So this won't be a comparison video between the Galaxy Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch Ultra, we should look at both watches separately. Besides, the Galaxy Watch is really only for Android users and the Apple Watch for iOS users. I'm definitely neither an Apple fanboy nor a Samsung fanboy and I don't want to advertise anything in this or in any of my other videos, I just want to objectively show which watches are the right choice for which people. So. Enough talking now, let's just dive into this review and check out whether the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a good choice for athletes. Have fun! First, let's get organized. Two years ago, alongside the Galaxy Watch 5, there was the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. A year later, the Pro model was dropped and instead we got the Galaxy Watch Classic with a rotating bezel. This year there is no classic model, instead we have the Galaxy Watch Ultra now. So this one is probably the successor of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro from two years ago. While it's already speculated that we might expect a new classic model next year again, so like I said this is all speculation right now, but at the moment it looks like this two year cycle. The Galaxy Watch Ultra currently costs $649 and comes in only one size with a case diameter of 47mm and a thickness of 12.1mm. It is the largest Galaxy Watch along with the larger version of the Watch 6 Classic and it's definitely not the smallest of watches. The regular Watch 7 for example has a case diameter of only 40mm in its smaller version. If you're used to smaller watches or have smaller wrists in general, I would recommend trying the Ultra on somewhere before buying it. At 60.5 grams it's also not the lightest of smartwatches. As mentioned the watch comes in only one version with both Bluetooth and LTE already included so there is no separate LTE version. However you can choose the color of the watch with options being titanium grey, titanium white and titanium silver, the latter of which I chose as well. There are also various bands to choose from with the standard one being this marine band. The band is quite resistant to temperature changes, water resistant and the air holes provide extra ventilation, making the watch very comfortable to wear and also suitable for swimming. Speaking of which, the watch offers water resistance of up to 10 ATM, meaning it's waterproof up to 100 meters, which no Galaxy watch has offered before. Overall the watch is super robust. The case is made of titanium as with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, while other Galaxy watches use aluminum or stainless steel. The display is protected by by sapphire glass which is also shatter and scratch resistant. A true assessment of durability can only be made after about a year, but so far the Ultra makes a very robust and high quality impression on me. The design features a square case with a round display. This might take some getting used to for many and is of course subjective. But personally I like the design way more than I initially thought. Maybe it's just because I tested many smartwatches and sports watches over the last couple of years, like hundreds of different models and this is just something new. You can certainly argue whether a larger display would have been a better use of space, but I think the display is large enough as it is. The display is 1.5 inches and has a resolution of 480 x 480 pixels, which more than meets expectations. The maximum brightness is 3000 nits which is incredibly bright. However this isn't really necessary. Typical sports watches with AMOLED displays usually offer up to 1000 nits and yeah you can definitely see the difference here but there's hardly any noticeable difference between smartwatches with 2000 and 3000 nits. 
For nighttime use, there is an extra night mode, which displays everything in black and red tones, which is much easier on the eyes. You can operate the watch via touch or buttons on the case edge. Notably, Samsung has added a new additional button. Besides the home and back buttons, there is now this orange highlighted action button in the middle. You can use this to quickly start specific actions like jumping into training mode or activating the flashlight and you can customize it as you wish. If you hold this button for 5 seconds, it activates the siren, which is also new. This is intended for emergencies such as if you've fallen and can't get up, or if you've lost your way, the siren acts as a call for help. It reaches up to 86 decibels and can be heard up to 180 meters away. Other safety features include contacting emergency services by holding the upper button for 5 seconds and fall detection. In terms of general operation, everything runs very smoothly, so there is no lags or delays. The watch has a new processor named Exynos W1000, offering 2GB of RAM and 32GB of storage. The rotating bezel familiar from the Watch 6 Classic is missing, however. I know many of you were fans of it, including myself, but the Watch Ultra offers a digital bezel as an alternative, which has significantly improved over the years, so yeah, while I prefer the rotating bezel, I don't really miss it with the improved digital bezel either. Let's move on to the main part of this video, which is the sports, fitness and training features. In training mode, there is a selection of more than 100 different training profiles with a notable new addition. There is finally a multi-sports mode, allowing triathletes to record multiple sports in one session. I have criticized previous Galaxy watches for lacking this feature and now it's finally here. If you forget to start the training, the Galaxy Watch Ultra can automatically detect some sports and ask if you're currently training and want to record a session. During the recording, you can display up to six data fields on the watch, which you can customize to your preferences. You can track things like time, distance, speed, calories, heart rate and steps, and you can choose different data fields for each sport. You can also set goals such as a time-based goal, a specific distance, calories burned or intervals when running. The watch also includes auto-lap and auto-pause features and it can provide audio feedback during training. The running coach is also included again. The watch guides you during your run, providing information on how fast and intensively you should be running. You can set your fitness goals in advance and the watch helps you achieve them as quickly and effectively as possible. The Galaxy Watch Ultra also offers personalized heart rate zones during training, analyzing your fitness level and suggesting the appropriate intensity for your workout. However, these features are already known from previous Galaxy Watches. One new thing is the race feature, which allows you to compare your pace with previous performances, providing some additional motivation by essentially racing against yourself. Another exciting new feature for cyclists is the FTP value, which means functional threshold power. This is the maximum power output in watts that you can maintain for an hour on the bike. Knowing this value helps you better adjust your training intensity. Normally, determining this value requires tests of about an hour, but there are also 20 minute tests or 8 to 10 minute tests. Samsung, however, now promises to determine this in just 4 minutes. However, you need a bike power meter connected to a Samsung Galaxy phone, which I do not have currently. It's also very unfortunate that you still can't connect external sensors like, for example, chest straps to the watch. This is a significant drawback to athletes who need accurate heart rate monitoring in all of their training sessions. But in the course of this video, we will talk further about the accuracy of the optical heart rate measurement of the watch itself. After the workout, you see a summary of the most important data on the watch. For example, in one of my gym workouts, you can see the calories burned, a graph of your heart rate data, including average and maximum heart rates and the time spent in different heart rate zones. And you can see even more data in the app. After running, you can see your route, graphs of heart rate, elevation, pace and many other statistics such as heart rate zones, lap times and advanced running metrics like asymmetry and ground contact time. It also displays the VO2 max value, which measures your maximum performance capacity. These are all very advanced statistics that are definitely remarkable for a smartwatch. However, it's important to note that traditional sports watches definitely offer more features, especially for long-term training analysis, which goes beyond the training mode. With Garmin, Polar, Coros or Sunto, you have additional widgets for long-term training analysis, showing your training readiness, optimal recovery and whether you are setting the right stimuli to achieve your goals. 
The Galaxy Watch Ultra lacks these features. You can download additional apps from the Google Play Store to this watch in order to approach the functionality of these watches, but you don't have everything neatly bundled into one package. Now let's also take a look at the health features for everyday use. The Galaxy Watch Ultra can of course track classics like steps, intensity minutes, distance and calories. The watch provides the usual view with heart-shaped progress bars. The Galaxy Watch Ultra also has its typical bioactive sensor, allowing for a bioelectrical impedance analysis that can measure body fat percentage, muscle mass and so on, similar to a body analysis scale. From my experience, you shouldn't rely on these results 100%, but this measurement has definitely become more accurate over the years and can definitely give you an overview. The bioactive sensor also enables an ECG feature. The Galaxy Watch Ultra can record an electrocardiogram on your wrist and detect irregular heart rhythms. Additionally, the watch can measure blood pressure, but both the blood pressure and ECG require a Samsung smartphone, which, like I said, I do not have. The watch also features an infrared temperature sensor and a skin temperature sensor, which is particularly useful for women's cycle tracking, but as a man I can't test this feature. Another classic health measurement is sleep analysis. Here the watch displays sleep duration, precise sleep times and the duration of light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep, resulting in one specific sleep score for your sleep quality. This is always hard to test for, but personally the results seemed consistent with my own perception. One new feature is also the energy score. Using artificial intelligence and based on various factors such as activity, sleep and resting heart rate, it calculates how ready you are for your day or simply put how much energy you have. This can help you better assess your daily form. You can also see this broken down into the various factors, allowing you to know what to work on to have more energy in the future. When it comes to health features, Samsung definitely doesn't need to hide from other competitors and it can even keep up with traditional sports watches in this regard. It is a bit sad that some of the features are only usable with a Samsung smartphone, but on the other hand, it's very nice that there is no subscription model to all of these health features. One of the main arguments for the Galaxy Watch Ultra over the regular Galaxy Watch 7 is its battery life. Most smartwatches have a very disappointing battery life in general and the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra aims to improve this aspect at least a little bit. The watch has a 590mAh battery, which is the same as the Watch 5 Pro, but significantly more than the larger Watch 7 with its 425mAh. Samsung promises up to 100 hours in power saving mode and up to 48 hours in power saving during training. However, this is really all that the manufacturer says, so there is no real number for the normal use battery life. So this is something I had to find out myself. On a day when I go for a half hour run and then spend another 40 minutes at the gym, so recording over an hour of training in total and then use the watch normally throughout the day, it personally consumes about 50% of the battery for me. So it lasts for two days. Mostly, if I charge it overnight, I usually need to recharge it again the morning after next. This is better than other Galaxy watches, which sometimes didn't even last a single day for me, but compared to traditional sports watches, the battery life is of course still not the best. For outdoor activities, GPS and navigation are crucial. Last year there was a minor disappointment because while the Watch 5 Pro allowed route uploads and had a backtrack feature, the Watch 6 did not. Fortunately, these features make a comeback in the Watch Ultra. Since the watch is equipped with Google's Wear OS system again, you can use Google Maps for navigation, but you can also upload routes to the watch and navigate your training based on those. If you're not on the route when starting a training session, the watch navigates you to the starting point with a simple directional error. Once on the route, you have proper turn-by-turn -turn navigation with audio feedback, vibrations and on-screen prompts. You get topographic maps with all essential details of your surroundings. You're alerted if you stray off the route and there is also a trackback feature to guide you back to the starting point. However, it doesn't really show the quickest route back, but reconstructs your completed route. So if you got lost 5 times from the start to your current position, the watch will suggest retracing your exact path again. Premium sports watches from Garmin and others offer not only this trackback feature, but also the option to create a new route for the fastest way back to the start point. This feature is not available on the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra. However, the navigation features are still impressive for a smartwatch 
and the watch is also compatible with external navigation apps like Komoot. Regarding GPS, there is a nice improvement. The Galaxy Watch Ultra is the first Samsung watch with dual frequency GPS. This means that the watch can capture two satellite signal bands at the same time, specifically the L1 and L5 bands. I have already shown in many of my tests before that this multiband GPS is indeed more accurate than traditional GPS, so my hopes were high for the Galaxy Watch Ultra, especially since my experiences with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and Watch 6 last year were not great. So how accurately does the Galaxy Watch Ultra now track my routes? Here you can see the recording from my usual running route, which goes through city, forest and residential areas. At certain points the Galaxy Watch Ultra cuts the corners a bit, but overall I am happy with the accuracy. But things get more interesting with a test in the forest. Here the GPS conditions are not quite as easy and this is exactly where previous Galaxy Watches have struggled for me. In this test I run the exact same path back and forth on a narrow forest trail. As we can see here the Galaxy Watch Ultra records this very well as the outbound and return paths overlap almost perfectly. I have seen significantly worse results from other smartwatches and many other sports watches as well. And what's most important is that this is far more accurate than the last Galaxy Watches have been. In black you can see the results of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic from last year for comparison. It's clearly less accurate and here you can also see the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro which has performed the best in all of my tests so far. Even compared to this watch, the Galaxy Watch Ultra isn't really worse. So I'm definitely very satisfied with the GPS accuracy overall. The new dual frequency GPS seems to be paying off. Speaking of accuracy, this is also crucial for heart rate measurement. Heart rate is one of the most central metrics because many other statistics ultimately rely on this value. So the measurement should be as accurate as possible. Samsung has installed a new optical heart rate sensor promising more accurate results. But how well does it actually perform in practice? To test this, as always, I wore both the watch and a chest strap during all of my training sessions at the same time and then compared both data sets afterwards. Here you can see the chest strap data in red and the Galaxy Watch Ultra data in blue for one of my running sessions. As we can see both curves are almost identical. The average heart rate differs by less than one beat per minute from the chest strap resulting in a deviation of less than 1% which is essentially a perfect result. For strength training, Samsung unfortunately does not offer an option to export heart rate data in the health app. However, here you can still see the results of the watch and the chest strap in direct comparison. We can see that the average heart rate of 95 aligns very well with the chest strap's 97. The maximum heart rate however is reported as 144 by the chest strap and 121 by the watch which is significantly lower. This is a common phenomenon observed with almost all sports watches and smart watches where they struggle to keep up with rapid heart rate increases. Therefore I would definitely recommend using a chest strap for strength training but I still felt that overall the heart rate measurement has become a bit more accurate. Alright, so what can we conclude about the new Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra? First of all, I want to emphasize that despite the length of this video, I didn't talk about all of the features of the watch and I didn't really want to do it either because undoubtedly the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a very good smartwatch. So there were tons of smart features that we didn't delve into in this video because I'm pretty sure there were many videos out there discussing this topic. In this video, we wanted to see whether the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a good sports watch. And yeah, for athletes, the watch is quite interesting in many ways, though there was still room for improvement in other areas. The watch offers tons of useful features with many interesting sports and training features, and the bioactive sensor allows for measurements that even traditional sports watches don't offer. For training, the watch and app provide a lot of statistics and analysis options. You can navigate during your training sessions and the heart rate and especially GPS accuracy have significantly improved. However, from a sports perspective, the watch still lacks widgets for long-term training analysis that show training loads and progress. And although the battery life is better than previous Galaxy watches, it still doesn't even come close to traditional sports watches. Overall I would say that the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a great smartwatch for athletes but it's not a pure sports watch. So if you're looking for a smartwatch that is also suitable for sports and training sessions then the Ultra might be the right choice for you. However at the same time if you already have the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic or the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro you should carefully consider whether it's worth spending nearly $650 for the Ultra.
But now let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the new Galaxy Watch Ultra. If you found this video helpful or interesting, you could really support me and my work here by giving this video a quick thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any more videos in the future, you should also definitely subscribe to this channel. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.